This is an example about how to calculate free cash flow to equity using financial statements. We have different formulas for free cash flow to equity. One of these formulas is net income add back depreciation minus capital expenditure minus change in net operating working capital plus net debt or we can call it net borrowing. So we will get net income and depreciation from our income statement. So we have here net income of 4.9 in year 2019 plus depreciation of 10 in year 2019. When we calculate capex, a change in net operating work capital and net debt, we need two balance sheets. Therefore, we need to get the years 2019 as well as the previous year, which is 2018. Therefore, in order to calculate capex, we have two ways to calculate capital expenditure. The first one is get BPE net, property plant and equipment. Don't use net, use gross. And the other formula is net. So this means that we will use two formulas, gross and net. We'll start with gross. So we'll get BBE gross at time t minus BBE gross at the previous year. So let's look at our balance sheet. We have our BBE gross of year 2019 70 minus the previous year, which is 2018 70. So we'll get here capex equals 70 minus 70 equals zero. Or we can calculate it from BBE net. Our formula will be BBE net at time t minus BBE net at the previous year plus annual depreciation from income statement. So let's look at the balance sheet. We have BBE net of 50 in year 2019 minus BBE net of 60 in the previous year 2018. So we'll get here 50 minus 60 plus annual depreciation from income statement in year 2019, which is 10. And this will give us exactly the same value, which is zero. Therefore, in our formula here, we'll say minus zero. Then we need to calculate a change in net operating working capital. So our formula for a change in net operating working capital is operating current asset of this year minus the previous year minus open bracket the change in operating current liability, which is operating current liability this year minus previous year. Therefore, we need to check our balance sheet and we need to look at current assets and current liabilities and to choose operating current assets and operating current liabilities. So what do we mean by the word operating? It means that it's used directly in operation, which means that it doesn't incur an interest or return. Therefore, in this example here, under current assets, account receivables and inventories are an example of operating current asset. Under current liabilities, accounts payable is an example of current operating current liabilities. Therefore, I need to get here the a change in account receivables plus a change in inventory minus change in accounts payable. So our formula will be account receivables at time t minus the previous year plus inventory at time t minus the previous year minus accounts payable at time t minus the previous year. So we have here account receivables of 26 minus 15 plus inventory 28 minus the previous year 20 minus accounts payable 15 minus the previous year 5. This will give us a change in net operating working capital of 9. So in our formula, we will say here minus 9. Then we need to calculate net debt. So from our balance sheet, in order to calculate net debt, we need to get our non-operating liabilities at time t minus the previous period non-operating liabilities. So it's the opposite of what we did with non a change in non-operating working capital. So here we need to choose what okay, this is the opposite of what we did with a change in net operating working capital. So here we use operating items, but now we use non-operating items. So let's look at liability side, current liabilities and long-term liabilities, and we need to choose the non-operating items. What do we mean by non-operating items? They are used indirectly in the operation, which means they incur an interest or a return. Therefore, notes payable, current portion of long-term debt, long-term loans, long-term bonds are examples of non-operating liabilities. Therefore, we will get here our net debt as notes payable at time t minus notes payable of the previous year plus current portion of long-term debt at time t minus current portion of long-term debt of the previous year plus long-term loans at time t minus long-term loans of the previous year plus long-term bonds at time t minus long-term bonds of the previous period. So this will give us net debt equal to 9.1 minus 4, which is the change in notes payable, plus 6 minus 6, which is the change in current portion of long-term debt plus 24 minus 30, which is the change in long-term loans, plus 25 minus 25, which is the change in long-term bonds. And this will give us net debt of negative 0.9. So in our formula, we'll say here negative 0.9, and this will give us 
free cash flow to equity equal to five. Another formula to calculate free cash flow to equity is using operating cash flow. So our free cash flow to equity is equal to operating cash flow minus capex plus net debt. We get operating cash flow from statement of cash flows. We know that in statement of cash flows, we have three categories, net cash flow from operations, net cash flow from investment and net cash flow from financing. We will get net cash flow from operations, which is 5.9. Therefore, we will say here, our free cash flow to equity is equal to 5.9 minus capex of zero plus net debt, which is negative 0.9. So this will give us five. Another formula to calculate free cash flow to equity is based on a change in cash balance plus net payment to shareholders. We know that a change in, can, in change in cash balance, we can get it from a statement of cash flows, and this will be our net cash flow, which is the summation of net cash flow from operations plus net cash flow from investment plus net cash flow from financing. So we write here our free cash flow to equity is equal to one plus net payment to shareholders. So what will be the formula of net payment to shareholders? Net payment to shareholders is what are the payments that will be received to shareholders. So from shareholders perspective, what you're going to receive. So you will receive dividends when a company makes profits, you will distribute cash dividends minus net equity. So what do you mean by net equity? This is share issuance minus share repurchase. So minus minus will be positive. So this means that it's dividends minus share issuance plus share repurchase. So how are we going to calculate net equity from the balance sheet? We need to get issued capital or contributed capital at time t minus contributed capital of the previous period. So we will get here dividends from our income statement. Here we have four. And then we need to look at the balance sheet. We need to get contributed capital at year 2019 minus the previous year at 2018. So this will be here minus 29 minus 29. This will give us four. Therefore, our formula here will be one plus four. This will give us five, which is exactly the same as what we did before. We calculated earlier free cash flow to firm as 7.79. So we can calculate free cash flow to equity based on free cash flow to firm. So our free cash flow to equity is equal to free cash flow to firm minus interest multiplied by one minus tax rate plus net debt. We have here free cash flow to firm of 7.79 minus interest from income statement is 2.7 multiplied by one minus tax rate of 30% plus net debt. Our net debt here is negative 0.9. So this will give us five. So in this example, we had four formulas in order to calculate free cash flow to equity and each formula give us exactly the same number.